everybody to Lake Central High School, the finals of the Harvest Classic. Nathan Laird, Dante Coza, Sean Hollis, now joined by Dan Bedoy. Guys, we saw some great uh, semifinal matchups here for the finals. Dan, what do you expect to see here out of these final matchups? Hopefully some good wrestling. We got our 106 uh, matchup here. Sean, what's our matchup here at 106? We have uh, Jeffrey Bailey of River Forest and uh, Aiden Dallinger. Uh, let me double check. Yeah, Dallinger. Looks like Dallinger. Bailey, uh, uh, right to a fall, it's looking like. He's getting to it. He's got that wing in. Still fighting his Dallinger. He's got the full set of near fall. Quick two. He's trying to drop those hips right on top. Not able to get the fall. He's going to run it again. Yeah. This, I've seen him hit this so many times. It, it's, he's so, so aggressive with it. I just turned it on. Nate, I had to post it for my Facebook friends. I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. I was just hearing the uh, the echo, and it's bad enough to hear myself talk once. I don't need to hear it twice. Dallinger got the escape. A 5-1 lead for Bailey with 25 remaining in the first. Bailey goes with a quick single here. Ooh, He's right going to the head for a cradle. Yeah. That's good. When you see a guy chain wrestle like that, that's that's good. Yeah, I just think uh, I think Bailey's so technically sound for uh, being a 106. A bunch of these kids are freshmen coming in, and they don't really know what to expect. And if you're uh, wrestling Jeffrey Bailey, you know. Well, and then you got Eric Keith in your corner now too, so that yeah. probably adds a lot to it. Jeffrey Bailey gets the fall. We'll go over to, um, let's see here. Which one of these uh, place matches do we want to take a look at? Oh, okay. Um. We're here on one. We got Beckham from Perry Meridian and Jones from Lake Central. We haven't seen anything of Matt One yet today, so let's keep it right here on Matt One. Zach, Mason Jones of Lake Central, just a sophomore. Bryce Beckham, a freshman. We saw him against Jeffrey Bailey earlier. Yeah, it's always nice when you get some Indianapolis teams that come up to the region. And Yeah, we were talking about that earlier, that uh, Perry Murden always has good guys. Um, Oh yeah, Perry goes back. I don't. I mean, when I was in high school, you had uh, what was it Nate Moore, Zach Pearson, Jim Tante was. Uh, he was the head coach there for a long time. It seems like wherever Tante's at, it's pretty successful. It has an impact wherever he's at. Yeah, Tante, he's a legend for sure. Dan, during your coaching career, how important was it to get your guys some matches and you know, against teams from out of the area instead of the same guys over and over again? Yeah, I think it's important to get some exposure um, outside of your backyard. Um, number one, just to stay fresh. I mean, sometimes if a school's in your conference or you're in multiple tournaments with them, it's uh, you see the same guy multiple times. It's not as exciting to get some uh, some fresh blood. So, you know, part of it, I think, is just that getting some fresh opponents. Yeah, I agree. Especially from, you know, I'm not too far out of my career, Sean included. And you wrestle, whoa, whoa, you know, whoa, 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 bro. Hey, well, hey, hey. Hold hey, on hey. a second, hey, man. Hey, hey, Now, when you were talking about Easy, old man wrestling dude. earlier, Easy. you were referring to the guy to your left, were you? Hey, hey there's a mat right there, bro. <laughs> Uh-oh. Hey, Dan, Dan's given me the work a couple of times. He's, he's hopped into some practice and gave me some of that old man stuff. I've, I've seen him do it. I've had, I've had it firsthand. I think you young kids call that uh, sneak dissing, right? Isn't that what you guys are doing? <laughs> yeah. But, uh... But, you know, I, I, we saw Portage every week, it felt like. And, you know, Portage was, was a great team when we were in high school, so it was always good to get good competition. But it was always more exciting to, you know, wrestle a new tournament that you got teams that you haven't hit yet this year, guys you haven't seen, or 
No, I liked seeing Perry because I think Perry hopped into the uh, the Harvest Classic actually like my sophomore year. Yeah. Um, that was the first year they, they got in. I don't know if they were in it previously or had gotten out and back in, but it was we got some good matches there. That was actually one of my, my first really big wins uh, of my high school career was against a good Perry guy here at Harvest. Who was the Perry guy? Uh, Kane, Kane Rust from okay. Perry Um I don't know what I don't know all of his credentials throughout his high school career, but I know he wrestled at Marion University, uh, there in college too. Perry, you know, I, I have a lot of friends out in Perry too. So yeah, Perry Perry's one of those communities or high schools that you know they have a lot of uh, kids who wrestle with a strong feeder program. You know, not mm -hmm. not every kid's going to wrestle all the way through, but um, the kids that do, you know, they've they've got quite a bit. And you can just see by the way this kid's wrestling, he's familiar with positions and he knows what he's doing. Yeah, and Nate was saying earlier too. I mean, if you're starting for Perry, you gotta be, you gotta be pretty good. Yeah, it's a deep uh, room for sure. You know, I've, I've heard I've heard of some guys not being able to get in the lineup or having to having to drop drop or bump a, a weight class or two just to get in a position where they can compete for a spot. Under a minute remaining here in this match, ten to seven our score in favor of Jones of Lake Central. Yeah, this kid looks like he's pretty good too. He's holding his own. He's got that left elbow in a little bit too deep, shortening it up a little bit. 40 on the clock. And this is the third place match at 106. Jeffrey Bailey won the championship via fall. Nice. You know, you see that a lot. You know, you gotta gotta lead by two or three points, and the guy's chasing you, kind of coming out of position, and took advantage of it right there, adding on to his lead. Yeah, he's he had to expose himself and take some risk, and it didn't work out there. And you know, you've coached a lot, and like you know, wrestled a lot in your career. Would you know when you're coaching guys? You know, they're down by down by three or four. Would you rather them, you know, force some stuff and try and make something happen than? Only lose by two or three. You know, you know unless it's a dual scenario. Where you that's what I mean. I was going to say it depends on a lot of other factors. I mean, you know, if, if it's early in the season and, and we're looking to get mat time, yeah, I mean, you should always have a certain pace uh, and be attacking. But, you know, once you start getting into the postseason, uh, you want to be strategic. I, I see three, you know, you say three points. I mean, sometimes that's an escape and a takedown. We're tied up. Yeah, for sure. So here we go with the championship at 113. Shamert of Hobart taking on Cortez of Lake Central. This will be a good one. Yeah, both guys had good, you know, good opponents in the semifinal, and you know, both made the final. Shamert, ticket rounder last year, I believe. Cortez was a ticket rounder as well. Ticket rounder at 106 and a ticket rounder at 13. What grade are these guys in? Uh, Shamert's a senior, and Cortez is also a senior. Okay, so this is their their last go. Yeah, last go. They'll they'll see each other quite a bit this year too. Yeah. <laughs> I grew up with both Shamrock and uh, Cortez's uh, older brothers, so I grew up around these kids. You know, they're really hard workers. Uh, been in private wrestling since they were five and six, because you know both uh, Shamrock and Cortez. Right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Looking for a little little dump here. Cortez still fighting it, smart and bellies out, so he doesn't give up any near fall. Shamrock should really look to keep him flat here. You know, Shamer, Shamer is a small guy at 13, but, you know, I, I've got got a chance to roll around him, you know, play wrestle with him a little bit. He's got a good tight waist. He looks strong. No, he yeah, is. He yeah, is. He looks put together. And, uh, I've, I've heard uh, around the block that Cortez is, is pretty strong himself. Yeah, well, if, if, you know, these guys have been doing it since five or six. I mean, you know, you're pretty strong mm -hmm. just being a wrestler. Yeah, I know. Cortez and Bailey, you know, the champ at six, have had some good battles in the last couple years. Yeah. Yeah, he's getting to that leg good. He needs to keep his head in tight here. Yeah, shamer has got that ankle locked up. Yeah, he needs to post the leg up and repenetrate. Yeah, that, I mean, that transition to the finish is, is huge. I mean, if you can close that up. The um, second move is, is huge for sure. Yeah, it's, a, it's two efforts, right? It, it's your penetration and it's your finish. And the tighter and more in sync you can make those, the better. Shamrock's going to hook the ankle there, which 
doesn't secure the takedown, but uh, yeah, it's going to be pretty on. likely that he does finish this now. He's hanging on tight to that leg. Yeah, two. once he got under that arm, you know, the official's going to award the two. Um, Hobart's quarter, uh, corner kind of staying on the official as soon as he got that hand under. is really calling for the two. That's going to give Shamrod a 4-1 to one lead yeah, at the end of the first. That's a big takedown in a short time in the period. Yeah. Cortez probably is a little upset that he gave that up. But, you know, he got out got out pretty quick last time. If he can get out here, take down, puts him right back, right back tied. Shamrod going spiral. Do you think he's maybe trying to... Uh Open that leg up to put the hooks in. Um, maybe I, I don't. I don't think he's. He's not one really to force legs. Ooh. Another another dump straight, attempt. Yeah, yeah. Got, got that elbow tight. Cortez is doing the same thing he did last time, trying to leech on. Kind of might put him in trouble. Yeah, this is you know one of these early tournaments where you're starting to finally see some some competition and uh, kind of get a feel for where everybody is. So uh, you know you get a, you get a feel for what someone did this summer. You know. Yeah. And I'm, I'm sure both these both these guys got some matches in the summer. I, I know uh, I know Shamrock wrestled returning uh, state champ at six. Now up at 13, Ashton Jackson, fought, you know, wrestled him competitively. I'm sure Cortez got got on the mat and put a lot of work in. Shamrock just proven to be a little bit too much right now. Back to his feet though. Cortez has had no problem getting out, getting up to his feet and getting out. But Shamrock with the takedown advantage. Yeah, he's got to, he's got to finish. He's gotten to the legs twice, but I don't think he's finished yet. Under a minute to go here in the second. Still six to two. It does uh, seem to be that uh, Shimmer has a really pretty tight tight waist. Yeah, because uh, Cortez just keeps sitting out and he uh, just keeps sucking him back in. Yeah, he gets he gets it deep. And he's you know for the most time most of the part of of the top position, Shamrock's trying to stay on his toes, trying to, you know, keep the pressure, create little openings. Yeah, a good tight waist will zap a guy too. I mean, if somebody's constantly cinching that tight waist, I mean, it it wears on you after a while with that pressure. For sure. It's a crucial uh, 24 seconds. Yeah, he's got to get one. Cortez goes stand up this time. Seems to work yeah, out. I mean, that's that's what he should have been looking for. When you try and force other things. Yeah. Well, if he can snag a takedown here, I mean, going that, that would be, period, yeah, five six. Yeah. Can't be adamant on just going in six three. <laughs> so the takedown battle is uh is three to nothing right now for Shamert, but. Uh, Cortez has gotten all three escapes, so that's the same situation I was talking about earlier. You can give up three takedowns, you get out every time, you get one, you're right back in a match. Shamrock's yeah. going to go ahead and take the smart spot and go bottom. This is Cortez's first time on top, so we can see what he's got. If he's got anything, he can try to get some backs or not. Got to return. Yeah, saw that coming. Yeah. Cortez is, you know, like Dan said, he's gotten to the leg a couple times. He's just got to finish. The second move has got to be, got to be there. So yeah, I mean, right now you're gonna need some urgency from Cortez, which he is. It just, yeah. it's got to be good. It's got to get good movement, not just you know. Yeah, quality attacks. Yeah. Kind of, you kind of need a sprint here, a minute sprint. The likeliness of him taking Chamber straight to his back, I, I see a little bit unlikely. Deep in on the leg here. Yeah, there's more urgency. Probably should go dump, dump before you go double, but he gets a double. Now, hello, there it is. Oh, unlikely, huh? To the back. Unlikely. Come on, unlikely. Jeez, look at that. This is hometown, baby. <laughs> he said, not, I, not, it would be huge. He heard me. Boom! That was wow. Insane. Look at that, baby. Huh? Wow. That's 
What a comeback hey, for uh, Johnny Cortez. That's being persistent. That's just hey, not giving up. That could, that could define this kid's season. If, you know, I don't give it too much, but that's a big win against a kid who, you know, I mean, a couple things there. It looked like the Hobart kid was better than him a little bit, maybe on paper. Then, you know, he came back from behind, finished it. And he, you know, and he did it, you know, at, at home around his peers. So, you know, I mean, there, that was a trifecta of good for, for that kid right there. Yeah, and I, I can't recall uh, what the matchup was, but I believe Cortez was in the finals a couple years ago. It, it could have even been last year where he was down, down big, and uh, and got a win. It, it might have been against Bailey. Um, I believe Bailey was beating him really bad one time at Harvest, and he came back and got a fall to win. So. Maybe that's just his thing. Possum, playing possum. Yeah, sandbagging a little bit. Yeah. No, that's a great job. Not he was he was not giving up. So here we are with the championship on 120. We have Bobby Conway of Brother Rice taking on uh, Miles Conrad of Portage. Conway and Conrad. Then we want to thank a uh, listener who let us know, Miles Conrad, Bradley Conrad, not brothers, as we uh, kind of assumed earlier. Yeah. So, got to make that correction. They're all brothers. It's Brother Rice. <laughs> no, wrong, wrong school. Oh. <laughs> Portage. Uh, Kuhn is the head coach there now, huh? Yep. Is he the head? Yeah. Okay. Region Sports Network announcer last year. We lost him to uh, coaching. He got some angry texts from me after he got hired. <laughs> In a joking fashion, of course. So Conrad's got that right hand under her. Got the head position. Got to start opening up with those fakes with his left hand. Yeah, you see Akuna in the corner telling him to start circling, getting him to move his feet. Conrad of Portage in the white with red stripes. Conway of Brother Rice in the burgundy. Shot from distance attempt from Conway. Unsuccessful. Yeah, he's a long kid, though. Yes. I mean, you kind of can You can kind of do that when you got the length and you can kind of bail yourself out of situations. Yeah, get a hand on it and pull it in. I'd say they're both uh, pretty, pretty long for the 120, in my opinion, too. Yeah, both lanky kids, which obviously works to their advantage. Official calls it out. Reset back in the center with 30 to go. Still scoreless. Conway with a pick. Yeah, kind of caught him off the whistle. He hooks that near ankle there. See a lot of guys doing that. Kind of anchors him down a little bit. They look cross face, trying to set up a cradle. Yeah, you know, short, tight ride. Mm -hmm. Then, you know, being a longer guy, now he's going cross body. Which we've seen a lot about, you know. We've seen a lot that a lot of ah, a lot of that today. A little stutter there. Did he get two there? Yeah, that two is going to be big. Yeah. yeah. Getting that two right, right before the buzzer. Yeah, if you can pick up some cheap back points, I mean that's that makes a big difference, especially off a of takedown. Conrad getting on top. Start the second. Yeah, you kind of open up the match, and you know, when you're up 4 0, you can take some more risk. Conrad with the reversal. Yeah, he's wrestling a lot looser now. So yeah. I mean, he's really looking to put this one away. He's got a wing. He gets the fall. Yeah. Conway, your champ at 120. We've had a fall in each of our uh, championship matches here so yeah, far. Yeah. yeah, I mean, and, and really kind of on on the both ends of that spectrum. I mean, you had the, the first kid came back to get the pin, and then. You know, you saw the front runner here, and he, he started getting more confidence the more points he scored. And you saw, you know, the other guy's confidence go down. So, I mean, uh, yeah, you can see you can have both of them. Let's uh, move over to mat number one, where you have uh, Guillermo Rivera of Lake Central 
taking on um, Kenny Schatz of Perry Meridian for third place. Kenny, Kenny, yeah, that's a good wrestling name, Kenny Schatz. Kenny Schatz, yeah. Match is uh, now eight to nothing in favor of Rivera here. That's why if I ever had a wrestling show, it would have been uh, the Bedoy Revolvers or something like that. <laughs> I, I didn't shoot much. I was, uh, <laughs> no? I was a better upper body guy. I've heard some people tell me that. Yeah. Some of your old, some of your old teammates and friends have told me some stories. I, well, I don't know if I was, I was that much better at it or people were just not, not as good. At defending it? Yeah, I mean, it was just something Greco. I mean, upper body stuff, it's not as, uh, you know. Not used as much. Yeah, it, it's harder to learn some technique. You know, I mean, not everybody's out there teaching it either. So it doesn't mm-hmm. Rivera, you know, looking good in this third and fourth place match. Kind of, kind of got beat up a little bit in, in the semis, and uh, expected him to bounce back, which he is. Yeah, how, how, how far removed are both of you guys, Hollis? And... I graduated in uh, eighteen. I graduated in 20. Okay, yeah. So I'm... Fresh I'm out, yeah. Fresh out, yeah. Yeah, you had some barn burners with the Hobo boy. What was his name? Uh, Turley? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, me and Turley always had good matches. Yeah, they were ex- they were exciting ones, too. Like. Yeah. Yeah, the Lake County was good. We faced two times at Al Smith, too, which was... You guys wrestled at the same Al Smith? Yeah, two times. I didn't even realize that. Yeah, he beat me the first time, and then I came back to uh, beat him for third. It's only been 2018, but, man, I feel like I've been out longer. I don't know. It goes quick. Yeah, I feel the same way. Honestly, I know. Mine is only 20. It's been a year and a half. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I know. What's going on here? I'll be in high school 20 years in May. Rivera gets the win. Buzzer's going a little bit too yeah. long for my liking. Yeah, LC's got some, um, they got some guys. And uh, someone I had a question about that I, I haven't seen in today, I don't know if he's, if he graduated or not, is Ponce, is Ponce still around? Uh, the I, think he, I think he graduated. I think he graduated. Did he? Okay. There must have been a mistake. For some reason, I thought I saw him in like the preseason rankings, or maybe maybe one of the. Got some feedback going on there. There we go. I haven't figured out how to talk and drink water. <laughs> so over on mat number three, final eighteen seconds. You have. Uh, Alex Vega of Lake Station and Drew Stahl of McCutcheon for fifth place. You had Schatz and Stahl in the same uh, weight class here. Yeah. <laughs> That's uh, the exact opposites of each other there. Yeah. That's like that uh, dad joke uh, for wrestling, wrestling dad joke where he's like... Uh, Kid's name is Forfeit or something. Like, yeah, yeah, I've seen that one. That was good. <laughs> every dad, every wrestling dad said that. Right? Yes. <laughs> I remember being very little, and I was like, "What is? Who is Forfeit? Who's Forfeit?" But they'd, they'd be like, "Who you got?" And I was like, "I got some some guy named Bai." Yeah, Bai or Forfeit. All right, coming up here at 126, we're going to have. Silas Foster of Purdue Polytechnic, a freshman, undefeated on the season, taking wait, on wait, Donovan Ruiz of Hobart's. Purdue Polytechnic, where's that? It's, an, been, it's a new team. Yeah, we've been trying to uh, look this up here. We'll, I'll see if I can find an answer. I mean, that's a, I mean, that's a great name of the school. Where is it? A little, at? little bias there. Yeah, uh, I mean, and, that, okay. yeah, with Polytechnic, like. Well, this kid's pretty good too, yeah. Yeah, um, I've I've seen I've actually seen a little bit of him rest, you know, his wrestling in the off season. He's been on some dual teams. He's definitely tough. Yeah, he just yeah he went right to work. Tilt, yeah. 
Rue is uh, tough himself out of Holbert. Uh, he's a ticket round loss to uh, Logan Frazier, which was the eventual state runner-up yeah, out of Crown Point. So not a, not a bad loss. Tough draw there. But see if Foster, he can kind of get back into this. Froster's only a freshman, too. And oh, uh, Ruiz is a senior, which is interesting. Gosh, Donovan's a senior. I am old. I'm getting there. <laughs> Good go behind. Yeah, he's, this kid's slick. He goes two speeds, fast and furious. All right, so there, there's a few Purdue Polytechnic high schools. There's a couple in Indianapolis, one in South Bend. Uh, three in Indianapolis, actually. Not sure exactly which one this is. So Maybe they all just come together for one team. Yeah, but, I mean, look at the swag they got. I mean, they got good swag. Look at the coaches. I mean... <laughs> Definitely not shy of scoring points. Already got eight up in the first period. 15 remaining, got the 8-1 lead. No, Foster's going to work. Yeah, I mean, he's even on looking. top, yeah, I mean, he's kept pressure. I mean, you know, you've seen uh, him push and drive in the whole time. I mean, that's always, that's always good on top. I mean, you know, you don't always have to be trying to go for a score, I mean. You know, putting some weight on a guy, pressuring him, bumping him, getting him flat. I mean, making him work down there. I mean, that's, you know, part of it. I mean, they reward that in college, you know, with riding time. I, I mean, but a lot of the same still applies. Ruiz getting a, getting a shot on top here. Yeah, you, you were in the Hobart room under Cook all four years. No, not no, Kirk, no, uh, not Cook. It was Ramos yeah, to start. Yeah, yeah, okay. Alex, I was under Alex all. All, all four. Career, okay. Yeah. Cook came in just the year after me, I believe. He's done a done a good job. Yeah. Do you see the the system change a lot or? Uh, oh, a ton. As it yeah. like the, I mean, as far as technique, because oh yeah, Cobra guys are always kind of like Matt Rat kind of guys. They're good at you know. Yeah, I think um, scrambling and stuff. You know, like that. I, Cook's really good. And Johans, I think Johansson's one of one of the better assistants. I've had a great relationship with him, and I, I think they both do a great job of you know they post their fun little videos and technique Tuesdays and stuff. And Cook's Cook adds a different game. You know, Cook was really good on top himself, so he's added a, a different arsenal on top for you know some of the some of the Hobart program, the Hobart kids. Um, and I know they got they got boat right over from Chesterton. And I'm sure he's helping out a lot. But yeah, they. I feel like the wrestling over there has developed a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. uh, got a di little bit of a different look, but well, I still... mean, yeah, Hol Holbert's a community that it's been. I mean, wrestling is part of like the culture of of Holbert. I mean, going back I, again, I speak to when I go back in the you know late '90s, early 2000s, and I mean, you know, a lot of those guys uh, are still in the scene and and still around uh, wrestling. So, yeah. I mean, it seems like their feeder program is just they get them started early and. You know, again, maybe you maybe you do it all the way through, maybe you don't, but you know, um, you, you at least they always pull some good guys out of there. You know? Yeah, every time you talk to somebody from Harp, uh, from Hobart, either either they wrestled themselves or they had a brother, cousin, friend who yeah. you know wrestled. So yeah, for sure. Wow. Can Can Two was on the in the you know, ninety nine team, I believe it was. And, yeah, uh, the boss. You know, I know, Joe Hurst. Joe Hurst's son actually used. He wasn't. We didn't keep him at Hobart. They moved down to, to Tennessee. But he's that. Uh, he's a freshman at University of Chattanooga. He was a Hobart guy growing up. Um, yeah, Cook, Cook's definitely added a, a different dynamic to, to Hobart. And Shout out to Cantu. He helped me fix my furnace the other day. <laughs> Good guy. It looks like we got the blood all cleaned up here. Nine to two. Favor of Foster from Purdue Polytechnic, which Indianapolis is. Uh, I was able to track down. Okay. It's not the South Bend uh, group. Yeah, I've never heard of them before. Yeah, he's doing a good job of attacking the head and hands. I mean, you know, he's creating pressure. I mean, that's one thing that when you're attacking head and hands, you, I mean, you want to be making the guy move his feet. You know, changing his level. I mean, that like there. I mean, he was able to pick because you know he. He had already put him in a position where he was kind of being heavy on on, on one side from that pressure, you know, two or three uh, actions ago. A 
I'll say this one for Nate since he's kind of a football guy. I, mm-hmm. I, I always kind of looked at head and hands, offense, defense, like football, offensive lines and defensive lines. You know, you got to kind of create those openings to hit the A gap, you know. So, you know, your head and hands um, are, you know, are, are no different when you start looking like that and starting to create some openings. I mean. Yeah, I, I haven't met a single football coach who was upset that his uh, players are wrestling as well. Yeah. And they, they all love the uh, crossover. Yeah, and and the, and I love the best thing about when they're like, uh, people say, oh, I don't want him to lose weight. Look, coach, he's gonna lose weight for about two months, and I guarantee you, I'm gonna give him back to you 20 pounds more, heavier than when he yeah. left for home. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, we uh, at Hobart, we had a fun little award at the end of the season. It was the Pig Award. They give you a little bobblehead pig, and it was whoever gained the most weight after season. <laughs> and some, you know, some of those football guys, you wouldn't think they'd be in it, but some of those guys were cutting down to 220 or down to, you know, down to 95, and they'd get back up, and they were huge. I was, I think yeah, I, even a short time there, he, he attacked to a leg. Yeah, that, that guys, the pig. Yeah, we used to do that. Step on the scale and see how, how much. Yeah. Portage, Portage had a uh, their uh, wrestling golf outing. They did that where they had guys. Everybody weighed in and see who who was the furthest away from their uh, high school weight. Oh, that's great. Isn't that funny? Wasn't me. All right. <laughs> I think I'm a I think I'm a two time winner of the pig award at Hobart. So. Are you really? Yeah. <laughs> I had some good competition. Urez is still fighting. Really, yeah, he, right now, it's what it's looking like is he's got to put a couple of turns together and start looking for a fall. It looks like uh, Ruiz's uh, strong suit might be top, but... Foster's got a big lead built, but he's still looking. Yeah, he's looking to throw those hooks in and maybe go cross body and look for some turns. And this is where you could see, you know, upperclassmen with an underclassman maybe be a little bit overpowered, you know, and, and Ruiz is on top, but he's got to get to work. He's got under a minute, and he's going to need two turns minimum, right? Yeah. More than that. Yeah. But no, he's going to need, well, two sets of three, he's still going to be under. He's going to need a, a fall. Yeah, I mean, even, in, you know, outside of this match and the big picture, though, just seeing what, what – what's working, what's not, what you need to adjust in. I mean, there, there's so much learning that could be done in a match right now that, you know, if, if you're not thinking uh, like that, you, you give up those opportunities. You know, you're, you're worried about a tight match right now, but the reality is, is, you know, everything that you've been working on for the last two, three months, uh, you know, you really haven't been able to test because, you know, you're uh, timid to, to go out there and do it in the match. So, I mean, really that, I mean, more than just this match, you know, trying to, T- make attempts to see, you know, and then you break down the film in, in the room and uh, you learn from it. Yeah, I was just going to say, even though it looks like uh, Foster kind of handled them the whole match besides the third period, even though he lost, he's going to have to look back and uh, try to figure out how to get off from the bottom because obviously it seems to be uh, not a strong suit for him, you know? Yeah. I mean, he, you know, he, yeah. he seemed frustrated there at the end. He kind of yeah. gave him a little bump or whatever, but... You know, you could tell he didn't he didn't feel like he, he got you know to do or try to wrestle his match. Yeah, his top or uh, his feet feet work or like footwork on the feet was just pretty good. Uh, he was getting the ankle picks off and everything else. One of the best uh, people on their feet that I've seen today. So Holbert hasn't had the best luck thus far in the finals. They'll get another shot at it with Weibel returning state qualifier at 26. This is Devin Weibel of Hobart. Yeah, nice little shot. He's got to keep that assertive. Taking on Michael Ortega of Portage. Devin's another one that's developed a ton within the last year. I think you know it was a huge confidence booster for him for him to get down to the, to the, the state tournament, and I think he's just kind of been building off of that ever since, putting in the work, you know, staying focused. 
He's not, you know, he considered staying back down at 26, and he said, I'm going to go up to 32 and just focus on becoming a better wrestler, not worrying about my weight. Um, yeah, he's riding tough here with uh, the legs in. He's looking for, like, a power half. Yeah, that's good pressure on top, for sure. What's up with it? Today I've seen a lot of Hobart guys uh, putting in legs. This one, the last I was, one. I mean, I was never big on it. I don't really even remember. Tyler was never a leg rider. Brendan. Uh, Brendan was a leg rider. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brendan was, but yeah. really, Brendan was probably the only one that, I mean, Fator was all tilts. Tyler was really Turk related, and I was kind of just hanging on for dear life. Cradles. Yeah, but I mean, Cook, Cook is a, a really good leg rider. Yeah. Known for his leg riding too, so. Yeah, I mean, it, a lot of times it's a, you know everybody's gonna obviously be different individually, but um, you know there's there's certain systems and you go over stuff in the room, so you'll see some of those patterns. Fifteen I mean, seconds. That's what we used to do when we break down teams. You know, just kind of like collectively, what were they doing? You know, and maybe address a little bit of that in the room. So it, it looks like. Uh, is it Ortega you said? Yeah. yeah. He's pulling that leg in kind of. Uh, you know, me personally, I would have been pushing that heel away from me, taking the inside of the foot, pushing it away, Scooting trying down. to post and scoot down. Yeah. When you when you tend to pull that in, you're kind of allowing the guy to continue to leech on you. It's And while you're pulling that in, it's harder to work down the leg at times. Yeah, that would have been huge at the end of the first there. But. Yeah. Well, I mean, you should know firsthand with, with Hughes. I mean, what did you, you know, did you get to be around him a lot, you know, um, with legs? A little bit. Um, I know uh, in, like, the clubs, he would come in and show legs a little bit. And, I mean, I was never really a big leg rider, but I figured it was something good to have. So I would just uh, watch him a little bit when he was doing that and learn from it a little bit. But never really a big leg rider. I'd always tend to find myself getting high and, uh, and then getting either mm. reversed or... Go back to our feet. Weird little exchange there, but Weibel gets on top. Yeah, it looked like he kind of slipped or something. Yeah. Yeah, Drew's. I'd probably put Drew up there as probably one of the best, if not the best, leg riders in, in Indiana, at least yeah. that I've ever got to see. You know, Honestly, I'd probably say even in college. Yeah, you know, he was getting some uh, recognition. Or, yeah, uh, he's... I know that. Uh, shout out yeah. to Drew. He double, came. double chicken wing right Ooh, there. That's looking dangerous. Get some mat burn on the face before homecoming. Oh, he's got to ride to the goes. shoulder. He's yeah. got a, there he goes. Drop the hips and head up. He's gonna lose it. Yeah, it's, it gets tough. Ortega's oh, gonna reach back though. Would you would you say when you see you guys escaping like that from from the chicken wing position that it's it's more so rushed from the top guy than you know fight you know obviously the bottom guy's fighting but it's probably pretty hard to you know fight a chicken wing or double chicken wing from bottom. Yeah, I mean he he had some time where he could took you know he could have put some pressure and you know been a little bit more methodical but um, still, yeah I mean it's if still get, fight on bottom for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I think it all depends too on the angle that you're driving it. Mm -hmm. If you're just like going with a straight circle, it's not really going to work out, out that well for you. Yep. You got to kind of go across the shoulders and kind of bend them and flip them over. That's just what always uh, I've learned. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, that definitely you got to find that that right uh, angle. I mean, it's probably going to change a little bit based off of you know how much uh, flexibility a guy has in the shoulders. Yeah. Like me, I'm, I mean. I'm so tight in my shoulders. You can just circle. I'm going over. That's a huge escape with one second on yeah, the clock. I'll tell you what. I mean, we'll, we'll see. I mean, uh, the, the Portage guy looks pretty fresh right now. If you just Ortega. saw the Hobart guy kind of just, he, he kind of dragged on getting up. Body language tells a lot. Yeah. It'll be big for him to get a quick takedown, though. He's got to get a takedown early. Yes. A little fake there. Yeah. Weibel with a 7-2 advantage. But this is, this is, this is, okay, yep. Yeah. Good shot by Weibel. Yep. Yeah, well, Weibel should push himself a little bit here. Yeah. What, you'd say cut? Yeah, you know, earn a major, you know. Yeah. Force yourself to work a little bit. Yeah. You know, it's early in the year. You want to want to open up, you know, maybe try and, you know, try a couple of different attempts. Don't score the same takedown every time. 
Yeah, I mean, Hobart's only down by three in the team race uh, to Portage, so it'd be nice if uh, they could get the major. I think I think it just it, it's good practice too for being yeah, in those situations regardless. in a duel, you know, mm -hmm. or you know, you go out there and coach doesn't want to have to put pressure on you, but hey, go get some points. It's getting a little high here. It's dangerous. He can headhunt. Yep, he's gonna get at least two. Makes it nine to four. Under a minute to go. Looks like Ortega's looking to pull out that arm for maybe a wing or something. I love, I don't know why, but I keep seeing some of these guys on the mat trying to look up to look at the clock, and they're not going to be able to see yeah, the angle, no. the time. <laughs> not I, I, lo I love this. I, I don't like when guys are looking I've at I've probably the seen it four or five times, too. I just... <laughs> no, I, you know, Weibel's going to get the win here. A little bit sloppy at the end. Looks like he's a little bit tired, but big takeaway is Ortega, I mean, he kept fighting the whole time. He's still grinding on top. Yeah, they should see each other again in the season. Oh, I'd quite a, quite a bit, I'm sure. Yeah, do you guys see Portage pretty often, or? I mean, when we were in high school, I, I mean, I'd go into the postseason with like five losses, and four of them would be to a Portage guy. So, yeah. So yeah. A couple, we get we get to see him quite a bit. Yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure when you were at Griffith, you guys got to see him quite a bit too. I was going to say, I think the most famous Portage uh, Hobart. Uh, rivalry was Alex Ramos and uh, Bradbury. I think they saw each other that year. I think it was like seven or eight times, and they and they went sectionals, regional, semi-state, and then they were in the state finals. That's insane. Yeah. And it was and it was a barn burner in, in the finals. I remember watching that match there live. This is uh, up next is McMillan, who's the guy that we were talking about earlier. I mean, Dante yeah. were yeah. in he his uh, well, semi. He yeah, looked really good. Went right to work. Pace. So I'm excited to see uh, how this match will end up. See how old I am. What's that one movie where he's like, not McMillan, but he's like Mick. McLovin? McLovin. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to, I didn't know where you were going, and I was like, oh, super bad. Gotcha. Yeah. I was thinking of like a wrestling movie until yeah. I was like, oh. Mick, Mick Muffin. Mick Muffin, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> Mick Muffin. <laughs> Doesn't sound bad. As I mentioned, Braden McMillan of Penn, he'll be taking on uh, TV Delgado of Portage. I think there's been a good showing for Portage today. I think I think a lot of people have said, you know, even last year we did a couple of, a couple of their matches and people said they were down and whatnot. Well, you're going to look down when you lose guys like Stephen Lawrence, you know, state runner-up, and McIntosh, and Gage Torres, Colin Pointer. When you lose those type of guys, people are going to say you're down, but there's I mean, still a ton of talent here in Portage. Though, yeah, well, Leroy Vega, I mean, that, I mean, it's those are some hard, I mean, they're little shoes, but they're hard shoes to fill. Yes, I mean. <laughs> they're little shoes, but they're hard shoes. I love that one. <laughs> you know, I'm just kidding, Leroy. Someone's going to send this to him. Oh, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, sometimes people would laugh. Or, you know, they'd make me laugh. And they'd be like, you know, that Portage coach. I'm like, you mean the three-time All-American from Minnesota who was on the national championship team? Like, yeah. Pretty fortunate I, I, to have that guy. Yes. Huge just impact. coaching. Yeah. I mean, you named off some of the kids that were products of him. And, you know, to sustain a program at that level, you know, and dude, they were they, they were such a good team. Even off season, they would travel together oh, everywhere. Yeah. He was everywhere. Yeah. And now he's at Purdue doing yeah. the same thing. Yeah. Doing I mean, a, I, it seems like he's enjoying his time there. Seems like he's doing a good job there too. Yeah. Yeah, two, he was two there. He stayed. Good stayed re -shot. composed on the edge. Yeah. That was a good example of uh, not quitting. You know, keeping the pace going. And, and uh, not rest. You know, continuously wrestling on yeah. the edge too. Yeah, I mean, Penn, Penn's another, I mean, they've been that for a long time. Brad Harper and I were actually teammates uh, at Purdue. And, um, you know, he, he's done a great job on building that program, you know, not just the high school, but the feeder program all the way through. Yeah. 
I was talking about how he was just coaching Hildebrandt too, Sarah. Yeah, you know, yeah. Olympic level, international level is. Yeah, well, I mean this area. I mean, you know, Indiana, Northwest Indiana. I mean, South Bend's not too far, but you know, let's say Maryville Semi State. I mean, it's consistently produced guys at the highest level. I mean, you know, the top at all levels. I mean, you know, we got to see uh, Micha Tresso at the uh, the Olympics, and you know. She's another one, and it's awesome to get that uh, pedigree of wrestling, you know. Yeah. And you know, this kid's, you know, uh, the Penn kid's been in the room when Sarah's been in the room to, you know, show something, and, you know, so yeah. he's been exposed to somebody yeah. who's been Olympic, you know, an Olympian. And even if it's not even just technique, but Probably, I mean, I'm sure Sarah. Sarah's not very old either, but uh, yeah, she I'm sure she. Up. I'm sure she could, you know, show a bunch of technique for for the guys too, and even just training habits. Um, yeah, the, a bunch the of things. women's wrestling had two Olympians: the Kayla Miracle and Hildebrand, right? Um. Yeah, Indiana. Yeah. Indiana. And then you know, obviously Stevan on the. Yeah. Men's side. Yeah, you got a match here, two one. McMillan with the lead over Delgado. He'll defer. Delgado just will select bottom. Yeah, we didn't get to see much of McMillan earlier, so we'll see what kind of gas tank he has because it yeah. looks like it'll go the distance. He went, yeah, his match earlier we saw was 46 seconds. He yeah. Right to, he went right to work. Yeah, he's got to get his, his head up and... Delgado up and away, not knotted up all at two. Yeah, he's. You can tell he's starting to get a little bit of yeah, momentum going. Yeah, he's hitting a second win right now. Mm -hmm. He's in that you know short offense position. He was almost looking like he's trying to go pick or, or drag to a pick. Mm. Good shot, but even yeah. better defense. That was good. Give the wizard and uh. Put it to him. Heavy hips here. Yeah. He's just gotta would you attack the grip directly or would you attack that, that elbow right there? You know, I mean, in that position there, I think just keeping that heavy pressure, the guy's head was buried. I mean, he wasn't in any threat of finishing, depending on what the time and the clock is. But the guy's seeming tired, so, hey, let him, let him burn his arms a little bit more. But... He you know, I think where uh, the Portage kid could be making some rounds is, is, is putting more pressure consistent. He's he's letting it. Uh, he's spacing it out. Yeah, right his, his offense. Uh, and that's yeah. how that kid dropped in on that, that high crotch. Yeah, Mick Millen here in, in the short offense position, front headlock position. Kind of got his elbows buried a little bit. I mean, this kid's smart. I mean, he's he's getting to positions where he can rest and, and maybe try to keep it tight going into the third. So, I mean, you've seen that when he's gotten into some dominant positions, he really hasn't had any, like, urgency to finish, yeah. you know. He hung out on the leg. He just hung out there. So, you know, hands on the knees. I mean, this yeah. is where the Portuguese got to be going forward, you know. I mean, you could dance in front of a guy all day. It does not. Oh, there you go. There he goes with the fireman. Yep. He That's going to be a big to two in. if he can yeah. finish. Yeah, he's got to finish here. Down position. Yeah. Got to elevate the short legs. Short time, short time. Five, five seconds. seconds. Yeah. Oh, got to hook that bottom his... leg. See, this is where that kid, you know, he's, he's pretty savvy. He's got two. Are you going to give it to him? They're gonna, he, he awarded it. See, this, this is what I missed, though, right here. This is where Leroy Vega and uh, Brad Harper would be both at the table trying to call it in to be yelling, you know. That's mm -hmm. <laughs> Add it in. That was huge. That was a huge two. Now let's see how the pen kid wrestles back. All right, now he has to have that urgency that he that he's lacked thus far. Yeah. Yeah. He he's gonna. If I had to guess, all right. Uh, if he gets the escape, he'll, he'll wrestle. But then he, he's not gonna try to get that two too early. I don't think. Probably gonna. Probably yeah, gonna no. chill out for a little bit. Yeah, you can see his gas tank kind of fading away. Yeah. Like you said, hands on the knees and everything else. Yeah. Because, you know, if, if, if you, uh, you know, you only got so much energy and you you use it up and then uh, he gets out and it's tied up and you got a minute to go. 
I mean, don't get me wrong, it's early and, you know, you want to push it. But I'm going back into the kind of when, when it comes to a strategy type, which seems like that's the kind of match this kid's wrestling. Yeah. Grammy roll there. Mm. That's going to be a reversal. Yeah, two, yeah. But now he's just got to keep no, him down yeah, for a minute and a half, mm -hmm. which I don't really see happening. No, the Portage kid, he, he's got too much in the tank still, too. So, so coaching corner here for you. So they are going to cut him. I was about to ask you, if, you know, how long you let him ride or work for a turn before you cut him. Yeah, I mean, that's probably a smart thing. Might as well give it to him now. And that way, if, that way if you lose one, you can get, still get it back. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of what we thought that this was going to be anyways, right? He got yeah. the reversal, but... The oh, going big. from McMillan. Mm. Delgado. He might have broke. Put his head I right on the so mat. Too. He was only down by one. Yeah, and he's, still, still, hey, he's still got 45. I mean, if he decides that he wants to get up and go for it, he, he's still plenty in the match. I think so, too, but I kind of think he broke a little bit. I think that's what the corner... <laughs> sure, yeah. I think that, I think that's what the corner is trying to tell him now is you're still in it. Yeah. But... 35 seconds remaining here. Delgado of Portage up 7-4. to four. We, we all got one of those, uh, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a shot and get spun behind, but hey, I, I tried. You know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, you know, whether the kid broke, I mean, it's, it's those mental mistakes, you know, we were talking earlier, Dante, we doing the break, and you know, you said, how did the kid lock his hands twice? And, you know, it, it's that pressure, it's that fatigue that makes you just, you know, yeah. throw a headlock when you don't need to, you know. <laughs> and, not, yeah. and not being in situations, you know, yeah. the experience. Yeah, you're right. The clock ran a little bit. Is that what they're arguing? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. See now, now this. Uh, the See, now here's a coaching strategy. I'd be taught. I'd be. Hey, where are we at on the? Give him some more time. Hey, no, I think we're at. Where we're twelve sec. Sixteen. Yeah. No, <laughs> yeah. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, you ever, you ever throw some of that in your strategy? McMillan's uh, yeah. staying after him right now. He can give up one point, but. Yeah. No. They, they, uh oh. See, because you don't want to do that. Yeah. He's, he, he's savvy. This kid's savvy though, right? He, he hung on a leg. Portage kid's getting after it. Three seconds left. He's probably just going to back up, which is all right. Off the whistle. No, I don't think it's all right. No, I don't either. So in college, in college that would be two because he's got both, both ankles, ankles yeah, and he's yeah. on his butt. But in high school, you, you have to. They, their officials want you to be above the waist on water and have the head popped out, essentially. That's a good win for Delgado of Portage. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, whenever you can win an individual tournament, I mean, that's a, that's a good experience. I mean, you know, it has its own element versus just duels. That was a good match. Yeah, for sure. I mean, the tournament aspect of it is it's its own thing. You know, it's like quarterfinals, semifinals, finals. I mean, sometimes there's, there's a, you know, a competition with just that, with yourself. We'll see Penn versus Portage again here at... 145 as you have Zamarian Hollyfield of Penn taking on Manolo Hood of Portage. Hollyfield, a sophomore, 3-0 and on the year coming into today. Hood, 3-2, and a junior for Portage. Oh, nice double. Hollyfield's kind of putting it on him, which is good to see. What did they give one point for? Did he say he was fleeing? Yeah, he drove him out. Yeah. I would have argued that call right away. I mean, is that a new rule, though? Or no? I, I, I mean, I couldn't imagine... I mean, he got he had a clean attempt if he wanted to lift and you yeah. know and take the two. And I would have took two over Flame.
Dumped by Holyfield to get the two. Yeah, keeping good pressure. Harper in his own career. I mean, you know, he's kind of known as a goer, right? Yeah, I've heard some some good stories about him. Hard worker. Short time here, 10 remaining. Looking for some near fall. Hollyfield not gonna get it. He'll end the first period on top with a three nothing lead. Holyfield takes down, but there's a uh, blood time. Is it Holy or Holly? I didn't even see. It's Hollyfield. Yeah, Holly I thought Field. it was Holly too. I think you're thinking about the boxer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he gets that a lot, right? Yeah. Seems like the third place match went, away, went by pretty quick, huh? Yeah, we had a fall in that one in the second. Yeah, they were. Okay. I looked over there. They were rolling around a little crazy. Someone, someone probably ended up on top. And, I always like this. Like, uh, it's a part of the sport we just skip by because it's what we know. But it's like it's the only sport with blood time. Yeah, it's, I was going to mention <laughs> that earlier. It's like I've never heard of another another sport that is, you know, they stop, they stop because they got to clean up some blood. Now every sport has their their angle. None of them were called as cool as you know as cool as blood time though. That just sounds yeah. yeah. Versus, you know, basketball is just stop at your play. Yeah. We're Char still looking. If you want to charge the mound. Charge right. The if mound. there's a uh, sponsor out there who wants to sponsor Blood Time, that's a cool naming rights sponsorship. So if you own a cleaning company or anything like that, you want to sponsor Blood Time, you can get a hold of us at the Region Sports Network, 219-923-2169. I should get a cut of that one then there, Nate. <laughs> we'll, 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 see, we'll see what happens. That was a layup. We'll see what happens. Yeah. We, we've, been, we've been searching for that one for a couple years now. Somebody's got to come through one of these days. Hood starting the period on top. See, I, I, I don't like that. When you give a guy a super easy escape with you know, not really an attempt to return or you know, force, a guy to, force a guy to really escape, I think you can break guys from that top position returning guys and you know you know what's the thing about high school wrestling and I don't know this kid so I'm, not, I'm, I'm just based off of what I'm seeing is like you know, you're, you're a lifer, right? You've been doing this for a long time. And some guys that they don't have all those positions and, and that strategy. So sometimes you got to try to figure out, you know, Dave Maldonado does that. You know, he takes football players and turns them into to wrestlers. From, Animals. Yeah, I mean, just, yeah. but with he, he keeps, you know, the, it's smaller. Like, he's not trying to, you know, show them some, all the intricacies. Sometimes it's just some basic stuff. Basic things there. So, I mean. The, the recent Ed Maribel that reminds me of that, Chris Walton. Yeah. Outstanding football player there. And, you know, again, technically maybe not the best wrestler, but just the athleticism and strength um, and, that, and what Coach Maldonado was able to teach him, you know, yeah, give him a, a nice wrestling career. Yeah, Walton was a good wrestler in high school. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, you know, like I said, I, I just telling, telling Dan, too, I, you know, I, in the off seasons, I like to hop, hop around, go yeah. get some of Vega, go, you know, go take some from Maldonado. And I remember just, you know, asking some of the guys and other coaches, including himself, Hey, you know, what's up with this guy? He's got a you know, state championship or state medal, you know, picture up in the hallway. Oh, he wrestled a year. Like, what? He wrestled him a year and, you know, teaches him, like Dan said, teaching him the basic things, good positioning and, you know, just being disciplined. Yeah, we, uh, me and you went to a mall that I don't camp from uh, together. You remember that? Yeah, John Morrison. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oklahoma State guy. Yeah, I always went to uh, their open rooms, too. Mall not always a great coach. Yeah, for sure. Another legend around, around the region. Yeah, Division One guy, Iowa State under, you know, uh, Bobby Douglas, spent some time around the Sandersons. I mean, uh, you know, we take it for granted the pedigree of coaches that we have here. You know, I, when I was down at Purdue uh, as a volunteer assistant, you know, we tried to get the club going. And uh, one thing I recognized early was that uh, a lot of coaches that, you know, in, in the region, 
the wrestling coaches are wrestlers. You know, it's like they're not necessarily, you know, uh, three sport, co- you know, um, and, and not that there's any knock on that or anything. I'm just saying, you know, we're fortunate to have guys who, who have made this their life and have yeah. done it year round. And, you know, it's part of our culture. And uh, you got the Dave Maldonados and you got the Andy Trevinos and, you know, the list goes on. Yeah, the Leroy sure. Vegas. I mean, we're talking about Division One guys, all Americans, Big Ten. You know, they live it. They, you know, they breathe wrestling. They love yeah. it. Ooh. Yeah. See, this kid, he just he looks like he's just doesn't necessarily know some all the positions. He, he, you know, his instinct was to roll through there, and the kid from Penn, you know, has a little bit more experience and just kind of, uh, you know, rehook the head, reverse hooked it or whatever. So Zamari and Hollyfield gets the win at 145. But you know, if if this kid sticks with it and they you know clean up some of those mistakes, uh, you know, he looks like he's athletic. He can he can do some things later. Right so you see right right now, uh, it's actually Leroy's brother Long Montel talking to him. That's a good sign right there when kid walks off the mat. You got coach it, you know, putting a couple things in his ear. You know, it's, it's big for the for the athlete, you know, to sit there and listen to. A lot of kids are upset or you know, want to run off. But it's good to listen to your coaches right off the mat while it's fresh. Yeah. You know, they can tell you exactly what they saw, what needs to be fixed. And yeah. then, you know, always come back to it later. Yeah, they're still talking about it. We Finishing things up at the fifth place match. At uh, 145, we'll run mat number three. Our uh, championship at 152 coming up. We will have uh, Aiden Costello of Hobart taking on Grant Mallory of Penn. Yeah, I was I was impressed with uh with with Mal. Are they gonna wait till the other match? Oh, it's finished. Um, I was impressed with Mallory, and like I said, I you know, Aiden's put in a ton of work. You know, he's been over at Elite. You know, he's put a ton of work in the offseason at Hobart. Scrapped with some of the best guys. Uh, Mallory looking to go big. Ooh. Wow. Yeah, that was Mallory, nice. Mallory's looking to put an end to this quick. That'll be five. Yeah. I, I will say I'll be I'll, it's very surprising to me because usually Aiden's very comfortable in those. Aiden made the, the Fargo team for, for Greco, I believe. Uh, only a freshman. He had a lot of time. He's going to look to get some height here. Well, I mean, you know, he's a fresh, you know, he came out strong too. Sometimes that's, yep. you know. So you got to keep that bottom leg and go Turk from that position. That chain wrestling there, it's good that he got that reversal. And Aiden's good on top, so yeah. we'll see if he can get to work here. Well, he, I think he, he got ahead of himself. Um, you know, he got the big five right off the bat and then was going right for a power half. Uh, try you know try to wrap it up, but yeah. um, this kid from Hobart seems like he's uh, you know he's like yeah, I'm not I'm not going out that easy, that easy, you know. Yeah. Seems like they got a problem with the score. Yeah, it should be five two. It's fixed now. Ray Pettit, good official, been around for a long time. Yeah. He was on one of my old state shirts. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Robin Ray Pettit. Yep. Another name, another uh, region wrestling name, family name. Costello trying to get to work on top. Mallory up to his feet now. Good to see Costello, you know, try and stay on top there on the edge, not give up, not give up an easy escape. Yeah, 30 seconds. You figure you can ride him out. He really likes this cross body stuff. Uh, I'm not sure he's gonna be able to hit it on Mallory. Um, and see, Mallory's doing exactly what he needs to do by locking his hands and hooking that arm. Yeah. To try and lift it. Takes a lot of the relief off that lower back and you know him trying to set up that, that split position. Well, I mean, he had a good cross body, but I, I mean, he went right to try to score from there. I, I mean, you could have probably made him work a little bit and keep that pressure down. Yeah. You know, you don't necessarily have to. See, I mean, this right here is big. Yeah. You ride him out and, you know, try to get choice, go down, and now we're within a takedown, you know? So you put yourself right back into the match after being off your, fighting off your back in the first 10 seconds, you know? Yeah, and uh, just 
some, some insight because you know I, I've worked with him a lot and got to see him. Aiden can pin, 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 pin guys from a lot of different positions, so he's never never really out of the match. Mallory's gonna be back on top here. Yeah, I mean, if you have a good pinning co combination, you're never out. Yeah. What was your go-to on top? Uh, I don't know. Maybe some wrist ride or something. I wasn't a real big top wrestler. I got sh I had short arms, legs. I'm like a turtle. You ever see a turtle <laughs> ride or anything? <laughs> so you see Mallory over here not really forcing the legs too much this time in the power half. He's kind of you know taking those wrists, riding a little bit smarter. He got reversed last time. A little adjustment that's proving helpful thus far, the first 30 of the second period. Costello needs to go ahead and get out here because I think he's probably best on his feet or on top. Yeah, for sure. I would agree. I got to get on this yeah. Oh, my bad, guys. <laughs> yeah, he's running out. Because uh, it might not seem like uh, Costello's doing too much, but he's trying to work to get off the bottom, and it's definitely putting a dent in his gas tank. Yeah. I'll catch up with you. You know, he, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't, he's not one that gets super tired, but anytime you're getting kind of worked on, worked while you're on bottom, it can take some out of you. Yeah, he's got to get one here. But it's, it's been some good wrestling. He's got to clear that wrist. Yeah, for sure. He needs to take that, you know, elbow inside, pop that off. Yeah. And this is where some of that experience comes in. But really, you only need one here. Yeah, one, one's all you need. Puts you right in the position that you need to be in. Well, it looked like he was doing some good work on top at the end of the first, right? Yeah, for sure. I mean, he was getting this. He almost had a little little leg in, leg in turt. He's just giving up that wrist that you were talking about yeah. too much, and he's letting him leech onto it. And Hand control. I mean, that's that's a big transition from, you know, Seventh, eighth grade, you get into high school. It's definitely. Something. I mean, especially in college. I mean, yeah, you don't reaching, come up he's unless you're back control. right now. He's got a leg hook, but I mean, he's still got. The fact that he's getting out of this is, is surprising. He's, he needs to bring it to his feet. Yeah, get your one. Mm. See, I like I said, Aiden likes going big sometimes too, and it got greedy there. You don't need to be greedy there. Yeah, he should have just broke off and got his one because that would have been big by the end of the period, but. Yeah, I mean, I, I think he got baited in there. I think that was that that kid from Penn was just kind of like, all right, come on up, but you yeah. know, he kind of yeah, he, he came him. up short, you know, with his elbows in, and uh, he felt like it was there, and, and then he went for it, which you know you want your guy to do, but um, you know that's again that's a lesson you'll learn now, you know, it's part right. of. So get, here's the one thing that Mallory can do is now that he's got this lead, he can't just lay on bottom, because when you lay there, you know, you provide an opportunity for. A guy to kind of do whatever he wants. And this is something that Aiden likes. This, you know, Marinelli from Iowa likes this head crank. He hooks that ankle and goes head crank. And now he's even probably going to look assassin from this position. He's looking leg cradle, I think. Yeah, he is. He's, yep. he's good at a variety of different turns. Yeah, you weren't kidding. He's, it, that's not it, though. It's not going to be the one to get it. He needs to go assassin here, more than likely, and step over. It's a... He need, needs a turn here. He needs to set up a fall. Mallory can just lay there, though. I mean, right now, only giving up one stall. He's really looking leg cradle here. But yeah. See, it's just not. It's just not a strong turn, though. Castillo's gonna have to get up and look for something big. Yeah, you said he was a Greco guy, right? I mean, yeah. I mean, he's wrestled Greco freestyle, and I, you know, I, I think in one of those types of matches, probably beats, beats Mallory. But Mallory's proven that he can wrestle upper body too. Yeah, so I mean, he's saw him twice. He's, so. Yeah, he's, yeah. Bait, you know, baited him into one and got him on the initial, initial throw that was nice. So. What grades the pen kid in? I'm not sure. He is a junior. Junior, yeah. You're seeing a little bit of that experience right here. Just match management. No, I'm totally he can there. sit on top here. Oh, he shouldn't have let go of that arm. He Should needs to go half. hard on this shoulder. Got to step out. Ten to five. Fifteen seconds remaining. 
And Costello is mean on top, so you'd never want to be on bottom. It seems as if uh, Mallory's going to get the win here, but if it weren't for those that first throw and even the surprising one in the yeah, but it, escaping, like, it could have been a win Like, for like Dan said, though, the experience of being in some of those positions, yeah. and he baited him in that, that second one where you know, it took three near fall out of that. That's a big, that's a big turnaround. Oh. Yeah, you can clean up some of those mistakes and, and change the, the match really easily. Completely, yeah. yeah. Fifth place, Alvarez. And fourth place, Flex Station, Joseph Williams. I think, um, you know, obviously I got a ton of ton of bias. Um, but, I, you know, I think I think Costello is going to be a freshman on the podium this year, come, come into the year. Um, and if Mallory keeps up how he's wrestling and has those, you know, has the ability to wrestle upper body and... He looked, he looked good, kind of laid on the mat in the third, but kind of being safe. Mallory looked tough, too. That's another Penn guy that I, you know, I hadn't heard of in, until today, and he wins the harvest. Uh, this is another big uh, Greco guy. The guy on top, AJ. He's AJ. a big thrower. Uh, uh, Steinbeck. Yeah, Steinbeck. Steinbeck. Yeah, he's a big thrower. I know uh, my buddy's wrestled him a few times. I've seen him around. Uh, I guess uh, him in the semis. It was just kind of just going a Greco battle, you know. He's always looking for that big throw. Our match here at 160, AJ, how do you pronounce the last name? Steenbeck? 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 Versus uh, Nate Chirillo from Brother Rice. Steenbeck from Penn. I know, uh, I know Steenbeck was a, was a qualifier the last two years, 21 and 20, I believe, at, at 160, so... He's been at the weight for, for some time now, so it seems like he's comfortable there. And what was the uh, the brother rice? Nate Chirillo. Chirillo. Chirillo looks like he's got a good motor right now. I believe during the introductions they referred to him as the Italian Stallion. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. No, that's, that. that's me. Uh, I'm pulling him on top of him, though. Yeah, you can't you can't force that position when you pull when you're pulling someone on top of you. No, that Okie State kid, he's a Italian stallion right now. Oh my, AJ Ferrari, he's something else. Yeah. He's gonna make a lot of money with this new the new deals. Yeah. Is uh what weight is he at? 197. Yeah, because I remember him last year. He was talking about possibly going up. You but... know, no one wants to wrestle Gable Stevenson. Two to two. Kind of sloppy of a first period from, from both, I'd say, but uh, I'm assuming this is going to be tightened up a little bit. Have any of them uh, been challenged yet today? Um, I don't think so. Good, nice return from Chirillo there. Uh, Chirillo had a forfeit, then one uh, with a pin, and then a major decision. Uh, Steenbeck. Uh, three falls. Yeah, so I mean, both these guys get, kind of have gotten what they wanted. It seems two like of, so. two of them under thirty seconds. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, now they're now they're wrestling. They're getting getting a little bit more of a challenge from each other. <laughs> and is uh, is Steen Becker senior? Uh, no, I think he's like he's a junior. Is yeah, he? he's a junior. So he's you know been a qualifier the last last two years, freshman and sophomore, and probably looking to get over that hump this year in Indiana. Yeah. Get that medal, if not more. Yeah, I mean the tournament itself is just such a tough tournament. Yeah. I'm surprised he stayed at 60. Three years straight at 60. Yeah. He's got that wing. Yeah. Yeah, he's got to grab that wrist and uh, suck it in so he could drive. Yeah. He's going to switch to the half. But see, you know, he's, he's taking his time. Yeah, going back and forth in yeah. between the two. Not, not forcing it. Yeah, eventually it's going to work out for yeah. him. There it is. There it is. Yeah. It's got to get chest to chest. The kid's strong, though. Yeah.
Steenbeck's not moving there on bottom, though, which might not be good for him in the end. Four seconds left. He's kind of got a hang here. Yeah, 17. It's going to be Brother Rice's choice, I believe. Yeah, they're going to go sit down. On bottom. Yeah. I hate that the clock's over there. Because if I was wrestling, you know, you'd see the time, and if you're on top, hurry up and try to get one or two if you were us or. Yeah, well, that's where your, your corner's got to be. Yeah. Vocal. I used to tell guys sometimes, I see him getting tired and like, 10 seconds would be 22 on the clock. <laughs> oh, yeah. He would, be one of the, he would be one of the guys to do that. Longest 10 seconds ever. Hey, only 10 more sprints. Yeah. Make him run 40 more. No, no, I didn't do that. That, that was done to me. That's cruel. <laughs> oh, I've had that done to me. That was not too fun. Steenbeck got him flattened out right now. Left boot in. Yeah, I don't know if down was the... Was the move. Yeah. But again, I mean, depending on when this match, probably not the move, but, I'm, you know, to, to be in a position where he's at, to feel this pressure and get better in a position... Yeah, look. He's getting that right elbow yeah. back. This reminds me of a position with uh, Alex Search's Gallic match. Have you ever seen that one? Mm -mm. Oh, In oh, Carver. Yeah. One of my favorite matches I've ever watched. Yeah, Iowa State kid, right? Yep. I think it was one and two matchup at the time. Or two and three. Yeah, I think he kind of forced it on top, too, there. Mm -hmm. It was about the time I'd probably cut him, I'd say. I mean, yeah, you can, but you need three takedowns there. Set that up. Yeah. Right? Eight four. Yeah, you need three, three takedowns. I mean, you know, I, you know, you guys both been out there. It's like what you're feeling right now. You know, what is the energy of that guy and how he's feeling? And, mm -hmm. you know, it, it sounded like or it looked like, you know, he forced that. And when he got so high, he didn't really try to pull himself back down. So he figured... I'll, I'll go down and try to just not get turned. Which final 10 seconds is going to work. That's some I mean, of strategies, even, you know, even on that stuff. Yeah. It's like, hey, how do I get to get to the bottom position without giving up an escape and a takedown? Oh, let him I'll, I'll force, you know, something on top and get reversed. So AJ Steenbeck gets the win at 160 pounds. Coming up here at 170, we'll have Tom Bennett of Brother Rice taking on Jesse Herrera of Highlands. Oh yeah, Jesse. I believe Jesse was a tick around, tick around guy at 70 last year. I, I know Bennett was a, th a third placer, I believe, in, in the state of Illinois. Um, so it should be a good matchup. Yeah, it's good to see a Highland kid in the finals. Yeah, I was I was saying earlier, you know, Jesse's Jesse works so hard. I don't, you're probably familiar with Mark Maldonado. Yeah. Run. Oh, yeah. He, you know, I know he works a ton with with Mark when he can roll around with him. And he's over by us. I get to roll around with him. And uh, super hard working, good kid. Good for Highland to get one in the final. Definitely a guy in Indiana that's going to be competing for a medal this year. You know, we, we saw Bennett working earlier. Bennett's got some slick offense. He hit some nice slide by as he can, and he hit a couple drag. I mean, I think the match we saw him get that, that tech ball, I think he scored yeah. six or seven different different ways. So clearly he's got offense. Yeah, he's uh, got two tech falls in the day already. So I mean, he looks, I mean, look at his legs. His legs look pretty stock, you know. Yeah, he looks like a stocky kind of guy. Mm -hmm. He wasn't, he wasn't shying away from upper body positions his last match either, so. Jesse shouldn't stress out about this. I put him in funky situations all the time, so. And for private lessons with Dante. <laughs> no, no, no cut in there. Nice, chasing wow. it, chasing it. Got to get that weight on the hands. Oh man, good scrappy. 
Good scramble to the leg. Not, ooh, look at that. Go to catch the ankle. But didn't work, but the, but that the fact that he's even thinking that, you know, try to catch that. Tells you he's a smart wrestler. Or, well, I don't know if that was a smart thing, but. He's, he's looking, he's, you know, he's anticipating yeah, he's, a yeah. position. There you go. A single takedown's the uh, the difference at the end of the first. 2 0 lead for Bennett heading into the second. Herrera will take bottom. Yeah, good strong lease. Got out. That might be crucial that escape so quick. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think it's, I don't think it's, uh, I think Bennett's really comfortable on his feet. You know, yeah. the ability that he has to score. Well, so, he's keeping a tight base, you know. He's, yeah. I mean, his center of gravity is nice fake, you know, pretty still. That's why I mean I was I said earlier about dancing out in front of somebody. I mean, you gotta be making that guy move his hips, his feet, getting his weight in the different legs and positions, getting, you know, like you, you shot to a protected base there, really, you know? Yeah. Good double leg. Yeah, he's got good uh he's got good hers, got good reaction time. I mean he, he reacts quick. I mean, right there he was he was beating the position, the guy had you know, had locked his hands, but his reaction time, he was able to get himself out of danger. Under a minute to go here in the second, two to one the score in favor of Tom Bennett. Got to work down the leg here. Good single. Just yeah. time here. He's got to be moving him around. Small though. adjustments. Keep him away from the edge of the circle. I think he's taking him to it. Yeah. It's the opposite thing you want to do. Be pulling him. Yeah, I'd be putting pressure down on the knee and pulling him towards See, that's, the that's a center. big mistake there. Yeah. I mean, he's gotten to the leg now, though, so that should be some confidence. What do we think? Bennett, Bennett goes down in the third? I think so. I think it's just going to be a battle on the feet. Yeah. There you go, Jesse, picking up his, his footwork. Yeah, he's, he's got to get him out of position. The Brother Ice kid's been able to kind of just stay, stay tight. What would you do here? Personally, if I was, if it was me, I'd go bottom because I'm more of like, if I'm not getting out within the first 30 seconds, I don't know if I'll get out. So I like to be an explosive uh, type of wrestler. So, and I think that's what Bennett's going to do also. Yep, see, so he's going to go all fours. He's got a good base here. Sit out. Yeah, that's a strong kid. Yeah, like you were saying, uh, Bennett's really quick with uh, the duck. Duck under attempt over there earlier was pretty nice, but I just think uh, Herrera's reaction time is also pretty good. I've seen Herrera wrestle around a lot because uh, he was in the same conference I was in. So, yeah, he's a good kid. Yeah, he's been, you know, these guys doing it year round. I mean, that helps, you know. We're around so many good wrestlers that, you know, once high school season's over, you can find the right rooms to be in. And Oh, yeah. It gets a, gets a different feel, too, because the guys that are wrestling in the same room all summer, they don't really get to see too much, you know? Yeah, you've already wrestled that guy, you know, a thousand times, and yeah. you guys know who, you know who's better and, you know, things like that. I mean, you always want to keep it competitive, but, uh, yeah, learning new things, seeing new things, it's all good. Yeah, that's how I'd feel sometimes in season with some of the guys I was with because, you know, you wrestle the same guy live over and over, it's... Just like, you know what he's going to hit, you know? Yeah. See, again, another Good situation scramble. where he's able to scramble out of. Him. 40 seconds left, Tom Bennett of Brother Rice with the lead over Jesse Herrera of Highland. Herrera's going to need something here. Yeah, his, his coach is starting to... Put some urgency. It, it can't just be one attack, too. It's, he's got to put 
two or three together, but there's one. And that second move is huge. Look at that. That's a reaction. Jesse didn't move up, but that second move, and, and Bennett had that reaction. Seven seconds. Tom Bennett and Brother Rice. I feel like I feel like every year Brother Rice, you know, they get one here or there, you know. Yeah. They're, you know, they always bring a good squad. He's a he's a returning placer. Herrera was right there with him. Russell wrestled a good match. I think some of those adjustments we were talking about, you know, finishing in the center, bringing a guy in, that's huge there. A second move on that that last attempt. This should be a fun one here at 182. We're going to have Jake Sues of Lake Central taking on uh, Jake Simpson of Hobart. Jake Simpson. Yeah, I mean, I, I think without, without looking back at the matches previous and what we got after, I, I think probably credential-wise, this is probably one of the better matchups that they got going. Um, yeah. You know, Sues is a returning placer at the weight. Um, might have been seventh. Could be wrong, though. I think he was seventh at, seventh at 82 last year. And then... Um, Simpson was a was a qualifier last year at, at 70. Have they wrestled before? No, they, not to my knowledge. Um, never in high school for sure, and I I don't think they've ever wrestled uh, growing up. But they'll definitely be wrestling this year. They'll probably meet a few times. Right? Yeah, they'll probably hit each other a couple times. I'd imagine. What are their rankings? Um, Jake's number four, and I believe Suze has a loss on the season. I, I didn't end up finding who he lost to, but uh, he, he dropped down to maybe 11, I think it was. Okay. They're like four and 11. I mean, but Suze is, in my opinion, Suze is probably still a top 10 guy. Um, and Simpson, this is his, this is his first, you know, mat, match uh, back on the mat, you know, since playing football for a while, so. Mm. But he's, like I was, I was saying earlier too, he's a super hard worker. He has been all his life. And There's definitely a difference though between football shape and wrestling oh, shape. Oh, 100%. Oh, exactly, yeah. And I think that's probably something he was probably trying to, trying to work on heading into this, but. Uh, yeah, they didn't make it too far though in football, right? No, no, I'm not getting into that with you. <laughs> wow. I'm not getting into that with you. <laughs> Wait, who did, who did they lose to? Uh, uh, I think uh, I think Lowell beat them. I don't think that happened. <laughs> okay. And Sean, where did you go to high school again? Uh, Lowell High School. Okay. He didn't play football, neither did I, so I'm not, I'm not upset about <laughs> <Yeah. by> it. <laughs> I'm going to have the Hobart fans. Not well, too they'll, happy. they'll get on you. Yeah. I, yeah, I know they'll they'll that for a fact. You. They'll get on you. It's good hand fighting in this first period, but no one really getting anything solid. No real strong control ties. Um, yeah, they're filling each other out. No one really wanted to kind of take too much risk. No, and I, you know, Simpson is no one that's, you know, he's not shy of close matches. Him and Herrera had a couple of nail biters last year. I know he had a couple of nail biters with Sneed from Kankakee Valley, and I know Sue's just had a close one. So this might be might be a close one, real close. Drop down there. Let's hope he doesn't get the stall. Is that Hughes the official? Yes. Me and Dante were talking about this earlier. Hughes is a good official too. Yeah, for sure. I mean, he's a guy who's been around for a long time too. I mean, his brother's a Big Ten guy. I mean, yeah. We need the, you know, we need these young guys. Too. Young, young too, understand some of the newer positions probably, you know, a little bit differently. Yeah. I mean, just even to carry the torch. I mean, you know, I, I don't know how it is in the referee, but I mean, just even within some of the wrestling, the coaches, I mean, Indianapolis, I mean, you know, before the, it was the region, I mean, undoubtedly, you know, we'd bring in, we'd bring home the most hardware. And, you know, now Indy's, you know, they're tough. Yeah, I was I was looking at you know some of the weights throughout this year, and I definitely feel like the region can can pull you know somewhere between six and eight medals, and maybe more. I feel really good about what the region's got this year. Sue's in this front headlock position, passing the elbow to Simpson, trying to drag out, but couldn't really get it. Sue's keeps the 1-0 advantage. 
He's going to troll in the center. That's, yeah. that's... Freestyle officials would like him. I'm thinking Simpson needs to probably put two or three together. That that one, he's you know that length of getting extended here. He's really trying to muscle it. Yeah. Rather than chase chase a corner, you know, chase an angle or, or split the middle. I think if he threw in uh, some snaps and some fakes, it would probably yeah. work to his advantage. But yeah. it kind of seems like he's just diving in there and. Hoping for the best, and like he, you said, using the strength. And this is a position that Sue really, or, you know, Sue really likes. He, he likes getting in this. He likes stretching you out here, and uh, you know, kind of wearing you down there too. You know, Simpson's taking pretty much all the attempts, but he's probably feeling it a little bit. You know. Well, it's it's like when you're doing positions in wrestling. It's like you're at practice and you're starting, and the guy's in on a on a high crotch. Well, I mean, not that it's the same, but it's you know similar in a sense that. The Hobart kid is shooting in, and he's not really in a bad position. He's getting to the leg, but he's able, I mean, he's ready to sprawl. You know, he's kind of playing a defensive game, controlling the center. I mean, he'll let him in and be ready to defend. You know, that's, yeah. I mean, that's what it seems like he's, what he's trying to do. That's why when you're putting that pressure on a guy and you get him in a bad position, you know, and you get to a leg, he's got to correct his position before he can defend. But if he's already in a decent position, you get to the leg, I mean, he's going straight to defense. Yeah. One to one, little incidental eye poke. A minute 30, minute 35 remaining between these two guys in the third period. I haven't really sent too many uh, shot attempts from Sears, huh? No, I mean. He said he likes the front headlock? Yeah, he likes the front headlock, and he, he's gotten to that position a couple of times through, through Simpson's, you know, uh, you know, lack of movement off, off the initial shot. They both have tried a little bit of a slide by. It's not really been there. Um, I don't know. I think Sue, Sue's probably banking on Simpson to take another shot, and there it is. And he wants to sprawl him and stretch him out. But Simpson working yeah. up, finally working up for one. He's gonna. He should go dump there here. There it is. Watch for a cutback. See uh, that cutback scared him. But you don't really got to be worried about that cut cutback if you really circle hard and dump hard. But you know, just reaching down there, it got that reaction. And he's controlling center, but Simpson's. Getting yep. all the shots. LC's getting tired though. I mean, he's starting to move him with those fakes, and he's starting, you yeah. know. Stalling on Sue's. The official. 35 seconds left. Sue's enough. It's a big position that Sue's likes, and he's looking drag. You could have went through by a single there. See, they got. He's got to push the pressure now. I feel like they're both a little, a little yeah, bit they're tired. Both a little tired. They're like, hey, let's ride this one out. Well, I mean, that, but that's a difference maker. You know, but susan has got a stalling call. You know, he could have he could have tried to shoot him out or. Sue's looking for one with eight to go. Don't force anything. Crowd goes crazy. That's the home crowd. Jake Sue's. Yeah, I mean he can, yeah. Three to one win. That's big. I mean, That's, you know, I, yeah. I don't know how, you know, his season, I think he's like nine and one coming into this match. And he had had a loss prior. I, I don't know if it was if it was a bad loss or what. But, I mean, that's a, that's a good win, a really good win. Yeah, it gets momentum going. I mean, any time you get in a rank, you know, a win ranked in the top four, it's got to be, you know, some momentum, some confidence. Has, has Hobart won a finals match? I don't know. I don't think so. No, oh. Uh, Weibel. Uh, Weibel. Yeah, Weibel did. Oh. Weibel got one. Here comes another football guy, Colton Zablekis. I know he uh, plays football for Hanover, too. You know, the finals haven't treated Hobart too well today. Weibel got one, though. That one sunk in, huh, Dante? <laughs> yeah, it hurts a little bit. So we're at 195. We have Caleb Paisley of River Forest. Then the white with stripes on there. And Colton Zablekis of Hanover Central. Then the white with the HC logo on the back. River Forest getting some guys in, in the finals too. I know they got another guy, a heavyweight too. 
Yeah. Getting some. You know, Hidalgo, Hidalgo, he's a football guy, but he's, you know, he's been coaching for a long time, and, I mean, that he, he was able to pull Keith over. I mean, that's big. Yeah, Keith is yeah. a huge factor. Definitely, definitely can help any program. What, you know, I mean, what, what I like about Keith in the, in the corner right here, look at that. I mean, look at his enthusiasm. I mean, his first year over here. You Energetic know, the whole time. Yeah, he's still coaching with passion. You know, that means he has a relationship with the kid that he's been working with him and trying to get him better. Yeah, I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't even recall which tournament it was. It was probably a couple, but I would, uh, I would go to some tournaments and there would be no other Hobart guys there. And, you know, the only, the only friends I really had seen there were some Portage guys. And they'd hop, you know, him and Leroy wouldn't hesitate to hop in the corner oh, and yeah. help, help you out. And, you know, they were always really good corner guys. You know, they'd argue any call for you. You know, they're loud. They're telling you how much time, you know, what position they're seeing. Paisley with two pins today. Zablek is with a major decision and a pin. Oh. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> Frank, Frank and I coached at Griffith together for a year. His older brother, or his older son. Cole? Yeah. Cole's doing well out yeah, there in North yeah. Central. Yep. Where is he at? North Central. Okay. In Illinois. Yep. Yeah, I mean, that's always, you know, some, it's a good option to stay around and wrestle. Because where is that, at Naperville or Schaumburg or something? Um, it's not far. I, be, I believe it is Naperville. It might be Naperville. Yeah, it's not far, though. Got a bunch of programs around here, too. You know, Elmhurst, Triton College, a junior junior program, junior college program that I, when I was at for a year was good. Got a lot of in-state stuff, in Indiana Tech and Marion. Big guys are getting active. Yeah, there's been a lot of activity. Who are who are one of the, the you know coaches in the region that you know you like coaching against? You know, it was always you always felt like it was gonna be a good little coach to coach battle. You know, had some good matchups with the you know with the kids or. Well, I mean. Too many? Yeah, I mean, when I was at Griffith, uh, you know, Jeremiah, you know, I mean, he's always wrestling a competitive weight. So, I mean, either uh, Colton, uh, what's his name? Colton. Um, he wrestled, he went to go wrestle at Army, right? What's his name? Oh, Cummings. Oh, is yeah. That you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah, Colton Cummings? yeah, I mean, and then uh, Brendan, obviously. So, I mean, it, will, it always got lively in those days. I mean, you know, and, and sport of wrestling, it'll bring that out, you know. I mean, you put so much time in, and, you know, when you go out there and, you know, you, your kid's fighting for, you know, you, you're going to fight for him, and yeah, it's fun. And it's, oh, he stands up on that. Don't see that very often. No, uh, he was getting high, but, I mean, it was good for, you know, a big guy like that to be able to come up, you know, when he felt that pressure come off of him. Yeah, in that position, though, it kind of makes it easier to get up because you're counteracting the pressure with uh, the half. I always uh, found yeah. that out, you know. <clears throat> yeah, kind of like on a stand-up, you kind of lean back and the guy... Yeah, it's uh, essentially like he's pushing you up. 2-2 two, two, and then second. He's got choice in the third. Looks like... I already forgot your buddy's name. It was hard to say. Zablakis. Zablakis. Zablakis originally went down, and now he's not down. Or they stood him up. Yeah, they stood him up. Stood him up. Zablakis with a 3-2 lead. What's, uh, what's that team score looking like? Can we get a team score update at the end of this match? Yeah, I'll, I'll get that for you. Minute 30 remaining here. Colton Zablekis of Hanover up 3-2 to two over Caleb Paisley of River Forest. 
Is Zablekis the uh, the lone Hanover uh, finalist? Yeah, yeah, he is. Be big for him to get Ooh. one. Ooh, Ooh. It's a nice little, nice yeah. little attack there. Yeah. Kind of now you see me, now you don't. And going to get another one. Is that that score can't be right, is it? Yeah. Is it right? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah, because uh, Zablekis is just up by one, three to two. Under a minute to go here. Yeah, both both former Portage guys in the corner. Interesting. So Black is in on the leg, high crotch. You guys were too young for those uh, Portage. Uh, Pendowski and Tharp days. You guys ever hear about those? I've, I've heard a few stories, but I was too young. Yeah, I was too young for those. You talking about Ed Pendowski? Yes. Or? 15 seconds here. Well, it's easy. Yeah, Ed Pendowski now down there, but he, long time Portage coach. 10. No, nah, we're going to go to overtime. Uh oh. Oh, no, we're not. Oh. Maybe. <laughs> we don't know. Three seconds. Nice. Caleb Paisley of River Forest gets the win at 195. Yeah, I mean, two, two takedowns for, you know, big guys like that, that's that's big. Yeah, I mean, prior to all the kind of club wrestling, you know, uh, back in my day, we you know, there used to be the RTC on Wednesday, and we'd all go to uh, Portage. I mean, and when I say we all, I meant... The region. I mean, you get the Maldonados from Chicago. You know, we'd go, you know, my crew would go. You get the Hobart guys there, and I mean, you'd bring two shirts because that that was the kind of room it was. But man, it was fun. That Wednesday, I remember it was. It was some good wrestling that day. Sounds like a good time. Yeah, it was fun. And Pendowski, I mean, he he he's a funny guy. You know, he's a character, so he was he kept it lively. You know. Mm -hmm. Where is he coaching at now? I thought he was at Carmel. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's what I thought. At, I believe he's still at Carmel. Because he was at CIA for a while. Yeah, yeah, he started CIA. Yeah, that was uh, that was where I grew up was uh, CIA when it was at Hanover. Mm. So he was my first coach. Yeah. Right here at 220. After this uh, third place match wraps up. From Lake Central, we have Michael and Dante. How do we say we were pronouncing it? DeGrado. DeGrado, thank you very much. I've, and, called, uh, him, I've called him DeGrado a, a bunch, so if, it, if it's wrong, then he should have said something about it. Very much. You Fair just enough. said you're an Italian stallion. Isn't that an Italian name? <laughs> yes. He'll be taking on Corey Hill of Portage. I think it's DeGrado. Our team scores in first place. Portage in first with 222.5. Hobart in second with 219. Penn in third with 208. Lake Central in fourth with 201. Brother Rice in fifth with 155. That's good. I mean, top three teams, all pretty tight. They keep saying Negredo. If it's at his home school, I'm going to believe him. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he just never told me I was wrong. I don't know. No, what's his name? Doesn't know how to say it in the time. Morgan? Bert, yeah. Josh Morgan. Not sure why. Uh, oh, nice. Pass the elbow man. right to a leg. I wonder why Michael's wearing that uh, wearing that face mask. A broken nose. Yeah. Something. He's got to suck him back in. Have you ever like wrestled a practice in those things or anything? No, I don't. I used think to so. practice in them just for fun, and it was not fun. <laughs> yeah, it would feel like just, claustrophobic. Yeah, you can't see you know, you know, on the sides of you, you can't see it all. Man, that's what I was doing, to you guys. That what? noise when you took those off. It was worse yeah. when you did it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> looks like I have some uh, technical things to figure out for uh, next time. <laughs> Good leg defense there. Yeah, usually when you think 220s, you don't think uh, guys moving a lot, but these guys came out firing, so that's good. Yeah, 
Yeah, when you got big guys like this putting some stuff together, it's always, you know. Oh, exciting. We yeah. were talking about uh, the match for third and fourth place at heavyweight a few years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, I was, me and him said it was probably the most exciting match we've ever seen. It was uh, Ricky Clark. Oh, they were like Robert kinda, Samuels. Yeah. yeah, we said uh, that was one of the most exciting. So every time I see a heavyweight match, it's a little boring or 220. I always think about that one. So. <laughs> Ooh, look at that right there. You land on top. Cinch the head. He's got the headlock locked up. Ooh, and and saved him. Clock saved him. Yeah. Yeah, that that definitely would set the bar. Uh, I think that was, I, I think there, you can even find like a YouTube video of that on like IHSA. Oh, yeah. yeah. That gives uh, Hill from Portage a four nothing lead as we start the second here. See some of the some of the crowds are starting to clear out. They don't give none of the big uh, big guys no love. Exactly. I was just telling him about how we were talking about yeah. Ricky Clark, Robert Samuels. Great match. You've you know, seen some of the teams leaving here yeah. as well. They, yeah. They don't got any guys going. They're not in the team race. They might be heading out. They updated the score. It is six to nothing in favor of Hill. Minute 23 to go in the second. Uh-oh. That's trouble. Yeah. Yeah. It's a big guy. If he gets under the arm, it's over. Wow. The Sal C kid though, he's not lame. I mean, no, yeah, no. I, I mean, in a, you know, not. I'm not gonna take everything away from Corey. Oh, Corey's wrestling great right now. I've seen, you know, Michael wrestle some real tough guys this summer, and and he, you know, he pounded on some guys that, you know, I, I think the one trip we took him on, I, I don't know if he gave up a point. You know, he's wrestling really good, so you know, he's got that mask on. He's not really looking himself. So I don't know if there's injuries lingering or got something going on, but Corey's, you know, taking advantage of every point of it. And, Staying, staying heavy on top, finding the you know, attacks. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, he's showing some pride out there. That's, the, you know, mm -hmm. he could have found a way out. Could have laid, laid there and let that match in right there. Yeah, I got caught. Uh, I got caught. Instead, he's going to wrestle the match. That's the man. This is the second period, correct? Yes. Yeah, 10 seconds remaining. But yeah, I mean that mask. I mean, it looks like it's it's almost in his eyes at this point. He's an athletic kid too. This Lake Central kid. Yeah, for sure, definitely. Yeah, he's not a rollover or anything. He's. It's nine to zero, but he's definitely putting up a good fight. You these, know, these guys will hit a, a couple more times throughout yeah. the season. You know, I, I predict this. I predicted probably to flip flop a couple times. I predicted to be a lot closer, even if it doesn't. Yeah. Um, Corey Hill looks good, and I think the the flip flop between him and Trey White at, at heavyweight and 220 is probably really beneficial to him. Looking good at 220 so far. Looks active, athletic, you know, still quick. Got yeah. that strength. Putting things together too. Yeah. He hasn't, he hasn't really stopped wrestling, so. Minute 15 left. Corey Hill in control. This one up 11 to nothing. Uh oh, locking up a cradle. 
Uh -oh. had, some, had some insult to injury. Final 40 seconds. I don't know about the singlets, though. What do you think? Portage, portage singlets? Red, aren't they? I thought they were red. Are they red and white? Oh, yeah, they are red and white. Yep. Yeah. What's up with the... Uh... Actually, you know what, though? Actually, yeah, I'm going to take that back. I love those singlets because uh, they were actually donated on behalf of uh, David Torres, who passed away. who's was uh, one, of, one of the Portage guys, long time. Uh, big, big name in Portage wrestling, so... Wow. Uh, I think his brother donated him to the team on his behalf. So that's a good, good little tribute. I, I was going at the IU uh, kind of look of them. Yeah, but that's yeah, that's where I was, thought yeah. that's where your animosity for that yeah, one pretty guy. From. Yeah. Does Hobart make two pieces now? Or? Well, they, I think they did. They didn't go through. I would never wear one of those, but some of them wear them. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so Corey Hill, you know, ranked ranked twelfth in the state right now. Just get a I win was over. Yeah, he's, he, got, he got number. He got a win over number eighteen, Degrado. Um, so that's yeah, a good win. You know, pretty dominant. And it looks like he's got a he's got a partner in the room. Yeah, that's always big when you. I mean, sometimes you get a big guy in the room and he doesn't have anyone to wrestle with. Yeah, well, you know. Um, Trey, I was talking to Sean and them about it earlier, I, and I work a lot with Trey. I like I like wrestling with him and giving him a different look. But I never got to work with Corey. But clearly, Corey's an athlete of his own. gets a, gets a good look every day in the room. You know, being that close, sometimes you don't get the like you said, you don't get the 285, 220 matchup in the room enough. You know, of quality and looks like they might have it. Our final championship match of the day is Nathan Paisley of River Forest taking on Trey White of Portage. Yeah, seeing, seeing Eric Keith coach against Portage is weird. Mm -hmm. uh, Tr Trey's speed is, is, is so hidden. He, he rarely uses it. And, you know, when he, when he opens up with it, it his, fakes are, his fakes are good. He's, gotten me, he's caught me biting a couple times really yeah. good. Sometimes you just got a little adjustment. He's got to lower that double. Um, Paisley had a had a good semifinal win. You know, another guy from River Forest in the final looking yeah. to make it. What if this this would be their third champ if they get this one? Oh, I think yeah, so. Yeah, uh, Bailey at 106. Other, Cal yep. Caleb Paisley yep. at uh, 195. See, I, I like when they when they kind of give those those iffy edge calls to the heavyweights because they run out of room quick. Yeah, they do. We went on, we went on a trip, man, where they took they were had half mats, and Trey was wrestling on a half mat, and every shot attempt he'd take, he was immediately out of bounds. He had barely barely shot and would be out of bounds. And that's a big guy to be running into someone else yeah. full speed. I had to save a couple tables and put my life on the line in front of Trey. <laughs> scary. We appreciate you. It was scary. <laughs> And again, that's Dante Cole's uh, private lessons. That's <laughs> yeah, <laughs> private lessons. Catch, catch now, me, now catch Dan me does get a cut. That's twice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, you know, watch, watching these big guys wrestle, they're putting things together. I mean, you know, a lot of guys. Uh, when they have a sequence, you know, he's setting it up, he's getting elbow control, he's passing it, he's passing, he's moving his feet to a position where he can score. You know, then once he passes it and he gets that angle and his feet are in the right position, he's shooting. I mean, that's, you know, I think that's what's missed is, you know, you don't you don't need a ton of stuff. You just, you know, need, need one thing that you're kind of working towards and, and progressively kind of get, you know. Yeah. Build, building up to that. Yeah. Because like I was saying earlier, like with the head and hands, a lot of guys just do stuff. But it's like, dude, your feet aren't even in position to score. So, you know, it's kind of just a lot of wasted energy. Mm -hmm. Hill's going to defer and Paisley's uh, choosing down. Yeah, that's, that's, you know, something I try and say too is you gotta, when you're actively moving your hands and your, head, your feet have to be, you know, following. And in put, succinct, yeah. Yeah, and putting yourself in a position to, to score. 
Good pressure on top from, from White. I'm sure he doesn't feel light on top. No. No. Casey kind of getting the base built up. They're going to hit him for stalling, but yeah, I, mean, I, I don't know if I would. Yeah, it's not top guys staying pretty parallel. You know, he's yeah. got to get out of his head. And then there's the other one. Yeah, yeah they're going to get a meet. White for stalling. I think that was uh, a makeup call. Yeah, for sure. Dante, we're going to get that double stall that uh, we were talking about earlier? I mean, technically, that was really close. It was, <laughs> yeah. it was really close. We need the official one, though. Yeah. I would prefer not to see any of those. <laughs> Some PTSD with that. He still had a good burst of energy, but then now he's flat. And... Yeah, I think, uh, you know, White, you know, Trey can get hit a couple more times, but he's working off now. I, th I think he realizes he needs he needs to go to work. Yeah. Well, that energy on, on bottom has changed, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, the head's down. I mean, that's always a big indicator, you know. If, if you're on your elbows and your head's down. Yeah. Yeah, Trey, Trey seems to be getting heavier and heavier as the, the period goes on. So he's the bar up one of those wrists. I think we might see a stalling here soon. Yeah, maybe. Now, but he comes right on the hips again himself. Right. So yeah, he's might, building back up. It might kind of save Paisley from the stalling. Yeah, he is back up. 30 seconds left. Dan, did you know that there was a, there's a thing in the rule book that, you know, stalls can be, you know, refrained from being called because someone is being overpowered? I did not know that. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. I mean, you know, you get a guy like, you know, we were talking about legs earlier, you know, double legs and the guy's arched him out, you mm -hmm. know. He's flat. Well, he didn't have a choice to be flat. Yeah, I mean, I just, I remember in high school, I, you know, one of the officials explained that to one of the corner guys and why I wasn't getting the stall. And they're like, oh, you know, you're overpowering their position. I'm like, I've never even heard of that ever. But I looked it up and it was, it was true. I didn't know it was true. Big ride out there. I mean, it's second period ride out. Trey's going to have a choice. He's going to go neutral. No, he's, I think he went down, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. I saw someone in the corner go like this. Maybe yeah, it was, yeah, maybe he, it was the assistant. Well, I, no, he, he, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, it's maybe a little bit more risk. We'll see. Yeah, but it might, uh, might burn some time for him, too. We'll see. Yeah. See, I mean, that's that's one thing about, I mean, there's, in wrestling, you know, there's, positions could be neutralizers. Yeah, and don't forget, Trey's got a stall, so he's not in a position to lay on his belly for, for two minutes either, so. Yeah. It looks like the officials, I already see that de demeanor, he's, he might be giving them one soon. They lock up the coaches now. You got, yeah, there you it got, is. Yep. Yep. That's one, yep. You got to be smart about how you try to lobby for that yeah. in the corner. Uh oh, he's got it locked up. No, oh, no, that's what I said. That's gonna be a big guy to try to try and roll back to that cradle. Yeah, I mean, I would just try to get him flat, get him flat, get him flat. Put your weight on him. Now you got to make a decision here. Do you try? I mean, you're probably not. I don't know. I mean, not likely you're gonna get another. I mean, he's in the same position where he was riding. He's riding just like like Trey was. Yeah. They're gonna stalemate it. Fifty-six seconds. I mean. Do you see him turning them or what? what do you, I don't. If you're don't in the corner, know. what are you doing? I'm going neutral right now. Neutral now? Neutral now. Neutral or hope for the stall, but either, that's very I mean, unlikely. You know, either try and get a breakdown right away and see if he's going to lay there flat, but if he's not, you know, go you know, go ahead and uh, you know, cut him away now. Give yourself the most time to chase him on the feet. Yeah, I'd probably cut him right around here. I'm doing optional start, circle in the front, bulldog pin. <laughs> it's because they're heavyweights, huh? Yeah. <laughs> 35 seconds remaining. Yeah, I think you got to let him go. Or you get your stall call. The River Forest corner looking for is that stall call. Yeah. Yeah, but he keeps building his hips back up. I mean. Yeah, I mean, but it, that's a tough. I mean, yeah. most time referees don't want to have that much play in the match. Even They're, though He's going to give him the stall, I have a feeling. I, think, nah. I see his hand switching. He wants to call the stall. No. Nah. He doesn't do it? No. Nope. Five seconds. I don't know. No. Okay. I believe you. Well, that one position we call a stalemate. 
from Trey White. He's going to get the win at heavyweights. Yeah, some good stuff. And that's going to be our final match of the day. We'll give you one final team score update before we close out for the day. The Portage Indians are going to take home the uh, Harvest Classic title, 231.5. Over in second with 223, Penn third, 208. Lake Central in fourth, and Brother Rice in fifth. I think it was got, you know, good, guys, little showing, good little yeah. showing between the teams. Yeah. I, uh, I will say I was a little bit surprised that, that Portage, Portage got the win, but you know, once I saw their guys wrestling throughout the days, you know, there wasn't really anyone wrestling bad. They were wrestling, wrestling tough. What was uh, the most exciting match for you? I'm picking the Cortez one. That yeah, was, say that say was say say yeah. Yeah. It, that might it has to be it. Yeah, no, home, was, home crowd too. You know, yeah. Sue's had a good one, good one too. It's good for both those guys. You know, seniors getting their uh, big win. At, yeah, at that Harvard. was huge. Me coming in and speaking for the finals because you guys were like calling golf in the semis or something. <laughs> wow, <laughs> wow. Yeah, save well, the day. Just true. Kidding, no, he, he's done it before. He did it again. No, you guys. And he's taking a cut guys, of everybody's money too. No, so. I, I, <laughs> yeah. I, I, it's good to see you young guys staying involved and and uh, you know passionate about it and um, being in rooms and stuff like that. So yeah, I mean. That's awesome to see. Well, we appreciate you guys joining us here. We appreciate everybody for uh, spending some of your Saturday with us. Plenty more wrestling coming up. Leave those on, please, so we don't have the uh, feedback. Okay, yeah, you got to do that. Thank you. We got to wrap things up here. Uh, appreciate uh, everybody tuning in. More wrestling coming up here. This is just the start of the uh, the campaign for us here on the Region Sports Network, so stick around with us here at Facebook.com slash Region Sports. We got plenty more wrestling coming up here later this year. For our executive producer, Chris Ramirez, for my broadcast partners today, Dan Bedoy, Dante Colza, Sean Hollis, Sean, great job on your debut. You've never done this before. You did I a fantastic not. job. So no, did, great yeah, job. For sure. Zach yeah, Miller yeah. on the camera. Want to thank uh, the folks here at Lake Central, Jeff Sandor, the assistant athletic director, as well as uh, Kyle Quasby for all of their assistance. So for everybody at the Region Sports Network, my name is Nathan Laird saying thanks for watching. This has been High School Wrestling on the Region Sports Network, where the region comes to wrestle.